All right, welcome back. In this video, we'll begin our discussion on vectors. To begin our discussion, we'll talk about vector components. Um, it's usually typical to talk about adding and subtracting them, multiplying, to, and all that good stuff. But for this video, I wanted to make sure we discuss some components first, as I find it's something that troubles quite a few people, and it really shouldn't. So, begin by drawing this vector. Problem says, vector, we have some vector v, and it's theta degrees above the x-axis. We need to find the x and y components. All right, so here's, here's some vector v above the x-axis, and it's theta degrees, okay? We need to find the x and y components, this being the y-axis, this being the x. So just using your natural logic abilities, what exactly would they mean by x and y components? Well, the distance, this, com this vector here, some portion of it can be described in this direction here. This vector has this magnitude in the x direction. And this vector has this magnitude in the y direction. Together, these two vectors make this vector. These are the components that make this vector. Okay, so this is the vector we have, and we call it vector v here. All right, so how do we find the components? Because we want to know what they are. We, we can clearly see they're here. But what are they? Now this is the funny part. There's a lot of people got tripped up here. And I believe it's due to a lack of knowledge in trigonometry. If a lot of you are struggling with the trigonometry, post a video and we'll see if we can clarify some of the basic topics so we can continue the lectures. But most of you should know enough trigonometry to follow through this video. And it, almost everyone's heard the saying that's taken trig or learned some trig, Sokotoa. Where the first letter of every, the first of every, <laughs> here's the S, this C and this T represent sine, cosine, and tangent. O represents the opposite side to the angle. H represents the hypotenuse. A represents the adjacent side to the angle or the side that's closest to the angle. H represents the hypotenuse and opposite obviously still the opposite angle, opposite side of the angle, and A the adjacent side to the angle. Not so bad. So what would this be? Well, let's think about that. This is the opposite side. So here we have sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And our hypotenuse is vector v. So the sine of theta is our opposite side over vector v. Well, if I multiply both sides by vector v, I get our opposite side is equal to vector v sine theta. So these two components make this vector here. This vector is a composition of these components. And this y component has a magnitude of vector v sine theta. And we'll talk about unit vectors. It would be called the j hat here. But we'll talk about that in a future video. Right now, the main target is to, to get you thinking about breaking them down. And basically, we're just turning them into triangles and finding the sides. That's all we're really doing. So for the, uh, for the x component, it's the adjacent side. So we have cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is vector v. So this side, cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side over vector v, the adjacent side over vector v. Well, then the adjacent side is equal to vector v cosine theta. So you have vector v 
cosine theta. And this would be in the i hat direction, but we'll talk about that in another video. So if someone gives you a vector, or you determine a vector in the pro subsequent problem in the future, it's some, some degrees from something. Well, turn it into a triangle, find the sides. All right, so this is the ocean, and here comes a dolphin with some velocity out of the water, and we want to know the x and y components. Well, we could draw a triangle, so extend line down. It's going to be a right angle because it's perpendicular to the surface. All right, and if this is the vector here, well, it must have an x component here. It must be have a uh, y component here. From trig, we know Sokotoa. And let's just say that that dolphin came out of the water at some angle alpha. And we want to know the magnitudes of the components. The horizontal component is the opposite side, so we'll be using sine. Sine of alpha is equal to the opposite side, which we'll call y here, over vector v. So y, this, is equal to vector v sine alpha. That's what it is. That's its length, its magnitude. Its direction is j hat. That means y direction. Don't let that confuse you. We'll talk about that later. For now, just know how to break it into its x and y components. So what is the x component? Well, this is the adjacent side. So we're going to use cosine. So the cosine of alpha is equal to your x x direction here, your adjacent side over your hypotenuse, vector v. So this here is vector v cosine alpha. In order for us to evaluate vectors in more than one dimension, we need to know their components. It's very easy to add components that are on the same axis. But as soon as we start incorporating vectors that are not parallel to the axis, and there's some degree of which they're lifted from that axis, we need to describe this vector in terms of the chosen axis. So you just find you just all you're gonna do for all these problems is just basically make a triangle if I just gave you a triangle and I told you an angle and I told you a side you should be able to tell me the other two sides so when you need to break a vector into its components all you're doing is making a triangle using trig to find the sides Breaking a vector into components should not be something you struggle with. If you are struggling with it, you need to make sure you fix that as soon as possible, otherwise you're going to get, have an extremely difficult time in physics, as just about everything is described as a vector in physics, and they're not always going to be friendly, and sometimes you need to break them into pieces so that you can, you can manipulate them. You can add them together and subtract them multiply. The core of the lesson is, let's say you're doing a physics problem, you end up with some vector here, some vector v still. It's just going to always be just some vector. This should never feel like different problems. If you felt like I've already done this two times, it's because I have, and that's how it works. I mean, I could give you 10 meters a second, then we could do one that says 5 meters a second. 
I mean, we could do one that says 20 newtons and all day long and it's always going to be the same story so why go through all those different examples when you could just understand hey you have some vector you need to break it into components so that you can use them so you can add them and subtract them and do what you need to do with them for to solve the problem well this vector here must have this much x component it has to otherwise it wouldn't be extended this far on the x-axis and this vector must have it's non-negotiable must have this y component vector with this magnitude it must because this vector here has this magnitude on the axis so this vector must be this so you you have this vector and you need to break it all you're doing is drawing a triangle finding the sides so Katoa well this is our adjacent side to some angle it's always going to be some angle it's 0 to 360 it's not like there's an infinite amount of angles I could use 5 I could use 10 I could use pi I could use pi over 2 it doesn't really matter all that I know is you know I have some angle I need to break it some angle I have some vector break it into its pieces okay so the adjacent side is going to deal with cosine so the cosine and assuming this is x the cosine of alpha is equal to x over vector v so x is equal to vector v cosine of theta well, the y component well it's going to be the same story all the time it's going to be the opposite over hypotenuse well opposite over hypotenuse so you have the sine of alpha is equal to y over vector v so y is equal to vector v sine alpha vector v sine alpha that's literally all you're doing when you're doing this you'll have some annoying vector that's not where you want it to be you're gonna break it into its pieces so it's friendly with all of your other vectors you're just gonna make a triangle find the sides that's it there's nothing more to it now as far as when you're solving your problems try to maintain some diligence in keeping the numbers out of your problems the numbers are arbitrary and they're gonna make it hard for you to connect ideas together they make it hard for you to see physics as physics is so keep the symbols and when you have finally solved for whatever you're trying to solve for in terms of symbols and variables then plug in all your your numerical values and A, you reduce your uh, inaccuracies from rounding errors and such. And B, you'll notice interesting cases where, hey, may, maybe mass canceled out and mass didn't even matter in a certain problem. And you may never have seen that if you just plugged in your numbers. So if you have a fear of these symbols and variables, it's something you should work on if you want to be a good physics student, especially if you're trying to be an engineer or anything like that or a scientist. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon.